We're going to go over briefly section 19.2 that we did before you left for spring break. And it's called entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is really another word for disorder. When we say entropy of an isolated system, we're talking about a chemical equation. And we're trying to determine does the disorder increase in the course of a change, and we put a further condition on it, a spontaneous change. Kind of like when we saw the egg drop, it can never go back together again. So. It is a very heavy duty concept, but what we're gonna do is focus on the understanding of this key equation. Delta S of the universe, which is kind of heady, is equal to delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings. We're going to use an example of melting an ice cube in the hand to really understand what are they talking about, about entropy of the universe. But in a broader sense, one can talk about using either Hess's law, delta S is S final minus delta S initial, which we did back in chapter five. We are going to, in this case, use the calculation method where we're gonna use a Q reversible divided by T. Think back to chapter five. Q reversible really stood for enthalpy. And later in this chapter, we will develop that from the Gibbs equation, but it sits here in section 19.2. Two things to think about. When we get a number for our ice cube melting, will it be a reversible process where delta S of the universe is equal to zero? And that's really called melting or freezing, or will it be an irreversible process where delta S of the universe is greater than zero? So that's the idea. You might have to revisit it. On my second slide, I have the key equation. Delta S of the universe is delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings. And again, our example is going to be melting one mole of ice. They will give you all this information. What I'm going to do is do the math. So if I have my delta S for this example, it will be my Q reversible divided by T, and it will be our one mole, because that's how much we're using. It will be our delta H of fusion, which is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Now, delta S's are always given in joules. So what we have to say is 10 to the third joules for every kilojoule. We will then take that Q and divide it by our T, and the T must be in Kelvin. The melting point of zero is 273 Kelvin. So what we come out with here is a delta S of 22.0 joules per Kelvin. It is a positive number, so it is a spontaneous process. So that's our value for delta S of the system. What we do in this example is we say, let's put that ice cube in the palm of our hand. The palm of our hand would represent the surroundings. It is still the same equation. Delta S is Q reversible divided by temperature. We still have one mole. We still have 6.01 kilojoules for every mole. And again, we must make the conversion of joules per kilojoule. Instead of zero degrees centigrade, which is the melting point of ice, what we're going to use is the temperature of our hand, 37 degrees centigrade, which is 310 Kelvin. When we crunch those numbers out, the value that we get is 19.8, uh, excuse me, 19.4 joules per Kelvin. And it turns out to be a negative number because remember, when we do these processes, it's Q of one process is minus Q of another. That's from chapter five. The Q is leaving our hand. The energy is leaving our hand. So it must be a negative number. So in the big picture, if I'm trying to calculate delta S of the universe, I will take my delta S of the system, which is 22, and I will add to that my delta, H, delta S of the surroundings, which is minus 19.4, and I will come up with still a positive number, 
2.6 joules per Kelvin. The whole idea behind this is we have a positive number. And that means that the entropy of the universe is actually increasing. I only made two slides for this. Please go and look at the exercises in the back of the book. And I think I'm going to make another presentation once I hear some feedback from you. Also, at this point, I'll just say I've tried this 10 times. It is not perfect. It will never be perfect. But it is what we're going to use.